Hey guys, um, welcome to EJO Tech, and this is the part three of the types and component of the computer system. And um, we're looking at operating system. And one of the things you need to understand about the operating system is it. When we talk about the operating system, we're talking about um, communicating with the computer system. We're talking about um, what enables the computer to function and we're talking about a special software that is installed into the computer system and there are various tasks that this operating system can perform right so let's look at it from the list we have here we have dealing with errors that are caused in application program yeah we have maintaining security of the whole system we have maintaining a computer log we talk about um, we have allowing communication between the user and computer system talking about the user interface and of course the control of the operation of the input output back and storage we know that supervising the loading running storage of application programs yeah. now the next thing is the user interface because um, the operating system offers various types of user interface we're just going to talk about the ones that are like trending, you know, like day in, day out, they are like trending. We have the command line interface. We have the graphical user interface. We have the dialogue-based user interface. And we have the getcher, the gestures-based user interface. But the command line and the graphical are usually the kind of questions you would expect from a typical operating system, right? So let's look at it. Let's explore it a bit. Good, we have pictures, so that makes it super easy. If you're wondering about how the command line looks, simple, right? So we have like CMD, and you could do like window plus one, and you have like your CMD, and you have this here, right? Right, it's still the same thing with um, PowerShell, right? They both do the same thing, okay? So we either we have this here, yeah, or you have the command line, okay? Hmm. Now, the command line requires a user to type in instructions to choose from menus. Open softwares, there are numbers of commands that can be used to type in, okay? Numbers of commands, okay? Now, um, for example, we have this. Let's go back to command line. And uh, we have maybe directory. See what happens. A lot of directories. We just explain all the folders. Okay, all the folders, and we can have like maybe CCD, and uh, that's to go back. We have CD and um, CD, and we can have um, maybe is it Jerry here? Okay, cannot find the file part. We have Windows. Um, okay, let's maybe we have users. Okay, CD, we have users. Hmm? Okay, CD users. Okay, you know what? It's fine. Um, we can actually look for them here. Um, so actually, we are actually here at Windows, and in Windows. Okay, now. Okay, so I have to go back to do maybe a CD again. Good. So I have this. So I can have um, CD users. Good. See that I have users, and what else do I have? And maybe I have CD agile good i'm now in agile okay and now we can find the directory for agile you can see that we have contacts document download favorite html links music the whole package and i can just close this just by doing exit okay so close right so we have an idea okay so we use them to key in uh, these commands every time an operation has to be carried out However, the advantage of the command line interface is that the user is in direct communication with the computer. Direct communication. And it's not restricted to a number of predetermined options. So that is one key thing, one, one cool thing, right, about the command line. You are in direct communication. Okay? Apart from the fact that there are often numbers of commands that you just have to memorize in order you need to type in, but you're in direct communication. Okay, which is actually pretty cool. 
All right, the next one we're going to look like, next one we're going to talk about is the graphical user interface. The Windows 11 is a key thing. The use of icons, we can open anything we want to open because it's so easy, so accessible. And that is why the graphical user interface, because it allows you to be able to interact with the computer. Okay, um, if you want to play a game, you want to listen to music, um, you want to open pictures, so many things. And this is known as icons. Okay, rather than having to type in the numbers of command, for example, the, the whole of the command line codes, right, you can just replace it by just clicking a desktop icon. For example, I want to go to a child, right? So I could just do this, right, Windows Explorer. Okay, maybe Fire Explorer. Okay, and I have this, right? And I can just instead of typing all those things, I can just okay use this, okay, Agile, okay, and maybe I just go to, um, okay, Apple, okay. I want to go to anything I want to go to. So it's it's easier that way. Maybe I go to OneDrive, okay. Get started with one drive, so it's easier for me. It's the whole process becomes super easy. Hmm. So we select the icons and they automatically execute. Okay, yes, the GUI, which is the graphic user interface, use various technologies and devices to be able to provide that user interface. One of the most common is what we have the whip, which is the Windows icon menu and pointing device. That's what helps us to be able to provide the user interface. Okay, and of course they develop for PCs, right? Your personal computers. Okay, and this is right here. Settings. Windows. About. So right here, this laptop is 11 Gen um, Y5. And uh, yeah, it's an HD Pavilion 14. Okay, so yeah, so this is this is actually cool, right? So this is what helps us for PCs. The Windows icon, the menus. These are the menus we have, right? You have you can have them right here in um, your terminals. That's to run your terminals. You could. You could sign in, you could sign out. There's so many things you could do. Your icons, pointing, this is a pointing device right here. And these are your menus that you can, you know, as much as possible, you can just explore them. Right? I'm using Windows 11, so probably click on all apps. And you can have all your apps right here. Right? This is your menus. It makes it so accessible to you. For each of those applications you have, each of them has a menu. Okay? Yeah, they have a menu. Okay, that you can actually work with. Okay, in every of the applications you open, any of the uh, applications, there are menus. You can work with them. It helps you to navigate. Okay, right here, I'm using the Microsoft Edge, and there are menus right here that I can actually work with. Okay, you can actually use a mouse to control or use of your touchpad. That's if you use the PC. Now, this is what we call the desktop environment. It contains an application and modern computer system that allows several windows to be open at the same time. So you can set to open. For Windows 11, you have them in tabs. So you can open so many of them in tabs. Okay. For Windows 10, okay, you just have to open them, you know, so many windows, right? The Windows Manager looks after the interaction between Windows, the applications, and the Windows system. Okay. Devices like touch screens, smartphones, tablets, yeah, they use that. The same thing right here. They make use of that. On your smart device as well, they make use of that. Right? The use of your touch screen, it makes it easy and accessible for you. Okay. Where the fingers are in contact with the screen, allowing for interaction. Now, let's look at the advantages right here. Command line. And the GUI. For the advantage, the user is in direct communication with the computer. That's cool. In the GUI, the user does not need to learn any command. There's no need to learn any command. You want to go to Word? Just type it here. No command. 
Uh, the user is not restricted to a number of predetermined options. You're not, you're not restricted because you can explore the computer with your commands. For the GUI, it is more user friendly, so icons are used to represent the applications. Another advantage for the command line, it is possible to alter computer configuration settings. Yes, because you could alter them. But with GUI, it's a pointing device, right, such as your mouse, which is used to click on icon to launch the application and the whole story. Now, let's look at the disadvantage, real quick. Disadvantage could be um, the user needs to learn numbers of commands to carry out basic operations. True. And we can see that this type of interface uses up considerably more computer memories than the CLI. Because you're using icons, you're using menus, a lot of memory will be consumed. You have an operating system to begin with. Now, this user is limited to the icons provided on the screen. Okay, they're limited, provided icons on the screen. Another key thing about disadvantage could be each command will be typed in using a correct format. So if it's done in the correct format, your yeah, errors in the spelling, you saw that recently, right? It didn't go, it didn't go through. You couldn't recognize it. You typed in the right command. For GUI, it needs a more complex operating system, such as Windows, to operate, which can be slower to execute the commands. So the question is, what would you use? Who would use each type of interface? For the CLI, the programmers, the analysts, the tacticians, those are the people that use it. Because you want to develop a new software, you want to look at errors, you want to move them. But for the GUI, they're just the, the end users who don't have to worry about, they don't need to have the great knowledge of commands. Okay, they don't need to. Now, let's just briefly look at the rest of them. Dialogue-based user interface, right? It uses the human voice. That dialogue to give commands to a computer system. Okay, like your cars, right? Um, you can say, hey, BMW, drive me to the nearest airport, right? So that's dialogue, right? You have your CV, um, you have your Microsoft container, um, you have um, Amazon Alexa, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you interact by speaking to the device. So you're using your voice to give commands. That's called a dialogue based user interface. Okay, so you can see here, Alexa, when's the night nice flights to Papo? Like, okay, from Terminal 1, would you like me to make a booking? So, yeah. Gestures based interface relies on human interaction by the moving of hands, heads, or even feet. Okay, so gesture interactions allow users to interact with the computer with a, with a more natural fashion without the need of any mechanical devices. Now, we use this technique, we call it computer vision or image processing. Okay, that's what we use it for. Okay, so you could rotate your finger clockwise, and even some gaming has some that gesture based interface. Okay, okay. So, advantages for dialogue, there's no need for drivers to take their hands off the wheel. Okay, for the gesture, we place mechanical input devices because you can actually use your hands to actually. Key in those things yourself. In home, it's very useful for people with disabilities because many tasks can be carried out by spoken words only. Coming to the effect of IT, right? In our homes. We'll talk about that. I think that is in chapter 5. We we'll still have a long way to go. So stay with me. No physical contact is required for gesture. And another advantage for the dialogue is possible to use as a security feature because a voice recognition could be used to identify a person. Now that is seen as biometrics. It's something you're going to encounter when we look at chapter eight. Chapter eight? Yeah. We're talking about um, physical and security of data. Security of data. Yeah. You're gonna come to biometrics. Hmm. Okay, no training needed to, interf to interface with the computer. You're using your hands, so there's basically no training. Disadvantage could be um, for the dialogue, still unreliable. 
with many commands not being recognized on needed to be replaced seven. It's still not perfect, okay? Because this is software. There's need for more testing and testing and testing. It can be quite complex to set up. Hmm. Quite complex to set up. Okay? And because these disabilities, people, they need to know how to use it. So it's, it's not easy to set the Alexa or Siri up. It's not easy to set them up. You just need to know which command can be used. Not You need to know how to activate it by saying Alexa or know the commands to use that Alexa is able to understand. Okay? For the gesture, it's possible for on international movement to be picked up. So maybe what you did, you're not intentional about it. It can be picked up. It can only work fairly near to cameras or sensors. So if you're not within close to that proximity, it may not work. And it can only accept a limited numbers of movement. So if you're not moving the way you should move, then probably it's not going to save. And this is where we'll call it a day. See you in chapter four. We'll talk about the types of computing. For now, bye bye.